And welcome back. Girls Inc. of New York City is a social impact organization inspiring young girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Their mission is to provide gender-based educational programs in the areas of math, science, health, and safety, financial literacy, and leadership development. What initiatives have actually been taking place to continue to serve the young girls during COVID-19, particularly ahead of May's observance of Mental Health Awareness Month? Well, here now to share a little bit more is the Chief Executive Officer at Girls, Inc., Dr. Pamela Moraldo. And Dr. Pam, good to have you back. Thank you so much, Darren. Great to be back. Great to be back. So talk to me a little bit about COVID. Everybody, I'll start off with the usual question. Everybody's, you know, trying to navigate. But what's it been like for you as an organization um, navigating this COVID-19 pandemic and being able to reach your young girls? Darren, I am very happy to say that ours is a success story because we started digitizing our programs uh, about five years ago when everybody thought, you know, it was expensive and a little crazy. We had data analytics digitized and most importantly, during the pandemic, a program called Mind Body Matters. What that program did was create a safe space and a forum for girls to share, to come together and to give them strategies to deal with the stresses of the pandemic. So they were meditating, using mindfulness, doing yoga, dancing, and we really helped them with this program understand how your thoughts and your daily minute to minute thought patterns really can shift your mindset and make your days better and make you better able to cope. So we had lots and lots of girls that were, you know, the, the trends in mental health for girls in New York City were going in the wrong direction before the pandemic. Mm. So the pandemic really just blew everything out of the water. And, you know, that we saw increases in depression, anxiety, suicide, ideation. But our program helped girls overcome isolation that they feel like when they're cut off from their peers, lots of times they're, you know, in a home where they don't have use of the internet all the time. So they really talked about how we were like an oasis. They couldn't wait for our programming. They couldn't wait to talk to their friends and to really get some help in terms of how to cope. So I really think that I am very proud of what we've done during the during the pandemic and, and the thousands of girls we helped. Right. The thing that I'm most proud of, mm -hmm. I don't even know if you know this, Darren, but we started serving following girls in our programs through to college. Because why? Because donors would say to me that 100% of your girls graduate from high school, but that's not such a big deal in this day and age. You know, are they going on to college? We never could afford to follow them because that takes time and staff and money. But we got a really generous grant from, uh, from a bank called Macquarie that allowed us to do that. So we, during the pandemic, 30% of college students dropped out, mm -hmm. either for good or just temporarily. The girls in our programs is a true story. We've witnessed a 99% retention rate for freshmen, which is the year that most college students drop out. And it's because we were able to provide them with the emotional support they need during the pandemic. So Darren, I, I, I am so grateful that we had these programs in place and ours has really been a very good story. Yeah. Congratulations. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. And of course, we are talking about mental health awareness. And when we talk about mental health awareness with young girls, um, talk to us about some of the different types of mental health that you find that your young girls are dealing with? Well, you know, when you're a teenager, being cut off from your peers is a really traumatic thing because, you know, you're going through your own development and finding out who you are and identity and awakening sexually. And, you know, your peers are kind of your lifeline. Plus, if you look at what's ha happened to adults and the domestic situations the girls are in, you know, you have, you and I have both heard the stories about liquor sales going through the roof, divorce rates going through the roof, 
So very often these girls were in domestic situations that were really tough and sometimes, you know, traumatic and an increase in incidence of domestic violence. So we were able to help them develop a sense of inner calm, no matter where they are, what the storm was like around them. And actually that's why I wanted to develop the program to begin with. It took me like 40 years to learn how to meditate, but it changed my life. And I thought if there's anything I can give these girls to help improve their circumstances, what would it be? And that was it. When they find out that what's going on in your body is directly related to how you can direct your mind. You don't have to just let anything come into your mind at all. You're in control. You can command it to do what's best for you. And that's basically what we're teaching them. And that, you know, that is where self-confidence and real power comes from. So I think that it's amazing to see how these girls are responding to this program, how resilient they are. And, uh, you know, what we were able to accomplish for them through this pandemic. And speaking of the program, I mean, obviously the program online, uh, a lot of virtual learning going on uh, due to COVID-19. What has been the impact of actually learning uh, through this virtual format and through social, uh, you know, through this socially virtually distant uh, existence that we have? Well, again, I think that girls think that our staff really stepped in to provide solutions because, you know, teachers didn't want to go into school. So even when they were allowed to be back in school, lots of times the students would be there because they had to be there and there would be no teacher in the class. They would still be learning virtually. So for us to continue our kind of hybrid, a little bit in person, a little bit online, has been really effective. I think online learning, virtual learning works best where there are existing relationships. So because a lot of times these girls have been with us since middle school and you know sometimes elementary school, we've developed a relationship with them and trust. And so, you know, they really adapted pretty easily. The only problems we had were, you know, some girls didn't have enough uh, either bandwidth or uh, there was one computer that they were sharing, the family was sharing, and they didn't have access, but pretty much we were able to help them get the equipment they needed and help them get set up. So I think the virtual approach for us was hardest for our staff because they had to be much more comfortable. I mean, in a way, virtual teaching is like, you know, being on the air. Mm. You don't have the one-to-one -one feedback consistently that you do in a classroom looking at the students and seeing if it, your message is getting through. But they adapted, we did a lot of training right away and we were able to pivot pretty quickly. And as I say, I mean, we had virtually a citywide girls summit with over a thousand girls that, um, you know, was on self care and teaching girls how to take care of themselves during this pandemic, what kinds of strategies they can use to keep their emotional health in good shape. So I feel like it was, you know, all in all, it was a successful run for Girls Inc. programming and the girls we serve. Great work going on at Girls Inc. in New York City. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Pamela Moraldo, and all the things that happened with Girls Inc. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me, Darren. Have a great day. Hope to see you again soon. Soon, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be a little bit further along in this COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. God willing. <laughs> God, yes, and God willing, yes. Have a so good one. You know. for Thank more, you. I'm sorry. For more information, uh, you can visit their website at girlsincnyc.org. Also, you can follow them on social media at girlsincnyc. Don't go anywhere. We've got more show coming up. Open continues right after this. <laughs>